Ladies and gentlemen, we're live on this Sunday Worldwide Transmission, the 20th day of November, 2016. We now know Trump's uh, official battle plan, Americanism, not globalism, is on the menu. In fact, it's the main course. This is incredibly, incredibly good news. And Ron Paul's come out with a list of fake news organizations to counter mainstream media's new fake list. And guess who's on it? The mainstream media that lied us into wars and spews racism and gives us fake polls. But first, let's look at fake news. Having lost the election and lost the argument, the butthurt left and the rigged media is desperate to salvage some scrap of credibility. So they've decided to create a new panic over so-called fake news, pressuring Google and Facebook to take action against fake news websites. Oh, and when they say fake news, that includes any reporting or opinion that contradicts their leftist narrative. The blacklist that all the mainstream media websites are circulating as the official designation of what constitutes fake news includes Infowars and Breitbart. Well, imagine my shock. But this list of fake news websites, it had to be created by a reasoned, level-headed, impartial source. There can't be any bias involved in this, right? Wrong. It was created by a radical leftist safe space social justice warrior assistant professor who describes herself as a feminist activist and who supports extreme left-wing groups like Black Lives Matter and Occupy Wall Street. Well, imagine my shock. So the media is circulating a list of fake news websites created by an incredibly biased left-wing social justice warrior, which just by coincidence is full of conservative news websites and then demanding Google and Facebook censor that content. This is all happening while Twitter also mass purges so-called alt-right accounts for daring to express unauthorized opinions. They're also promoting a Chrome browser extension that automatically flags so-called fake news websites based on this same SJW created blacklist. And imagine my shock! Infowars.com is on that list. Listen, we all know that there are actual fake news websites. They're pretty easy to spot. And some of them even admit that they're fake news websites. But there's a difference between fake news stories like this and having a conservative opinion. And anyway, who gave the mainstream media the right to be judge, jury and executioner of what constitutes fake news? All you do is put out fake news. You're the aficionados of fake news. You put out the fake news that Hillary Clinton was 98% likely to win the presidency. You printed out and shipped copies of Newsweek celebrating Madame President. You said the Cubs had a smaller chance of winning than Donald Trump. You put out fake rigged policies that were proven spectacularly wrong. You put out fake rape stories that ruin people's lives over and over again. You fake interviews with your own cameramen claiming they're anti-Trump protesters. You create fake narratives like Trump being responsible for violence at his own rallies when it was DNC funded agitators all along. By this measure, nearly every mainstream media outlet should be put on a fake news list. Oh yeah, and when some fake news website puts out a fake news story, the worst case scenario is that someone makes some ill-gotten advertising dollars. When the mainstream media peddles fake news, like the fake news story that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, hundreds of thousands of people die. You're the f experts at fake news, so how dare you accuse us of being fake news? And why the hell should anyone trust you? As WikiLeaks exposed, you're not the fourth estate, you're a public relations front for the Democratic Party. You lost the argument, you trashed your own credibility, and now you're trying to resurrect it by claiming that everyone who beat you is fake news. Give me a break. No one trusts you. That's why you have to resort to dirty tricks and censorship. And it's not going to work. Because you suck, you lie, and everyone knows now that you're fake news. We'll be back in about 70 seconds to kick off the main transmission. I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com. The sands of time for global government, a private corporate government that is tax exempt and above the law, is running low. In fact, it was Barack Obama and Angela Merkel who met desperately last Friday trying to figure out how to stave off the collapse of private corporate world government. What a delusional group of elites who actually believed that they could 
establish a private planetary government, give themselves diplomatic immunity and tax exemption, and then just deny to the public it existed. But last Monday, the New York Times was still trying that. They were, they were out saying that Alex Jones believes in a global government globalism conspiracy. He believes in a thing called globalism. Meanwhile, we have the president and the German chancellor running around saying globalism is in crisis. Global government is in trouble. This is how mainstream media talks to you like you're a three-year-old. Extreme, extreme arrogance. Now, I've got a lot of news, obviously, to break down here before we open the phones up on this Sunday edition and take your calls. We're here every Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. I return weekdays, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central. We have InfoWars Nightly News, 7 o'clock Central, weeknights as well. Uh, there's been a lot of interesting uh, things unfolding this week. Uh, the mainstream media went from saying that we were a tiny show that had no viewers and listeners to admitting that we're bigger than the New York Times and the Washington Post and are rated 126 on the web. That's just our website. They also have begun to recognize that other independent media is much bigger than them. And so it's a real come to Jesus moment for these arrogant sycophants. And their response is, and I have the clip coming up, kick Alex Jones off the air. So if that is an authoritarian, uh, I don't know what is. But before we go there, there's a very interesting article out of the Hollywood Reporter that we've posted up on Infowars.com. And it came out Friday, and, and Steve Bannon is the head strategist uh, for the Trump White House and good friends with Trump for decades. And, of course, he took over uh, Breitbart in the last few years and has made it very, very nationalistic, very, very anti-New World Order, uh, not just, uh, you know, just anti-social uh, justice warrior liberal. And if you read this article, it's the spirit of America. People say, why is Steve Bannon reading off the same sheet of music as Alex Jones? Or uh, why is Joseph Fair reading off the same sheet as Alex Jones? Or why is uh, Matt Drudge reading off the same sheet as Alex Jones? It's not like we got some sheet or talking point. This is how the real world works. And we're breaking down the real players and the real political and economic systems. And Americanism is the renaissance is free market, is the people making their own decisions, is the lowest tax rates in the world. They keep asking what makes America great again, like Trump hasn't been clear. No taxes for working class people. Having fair trade deals, not letting globalist interest sell out the incredible American dynamo. The United States by the 1950s had something like 80% of world production, totally controlled everything, was spreading freedom worldwide, and then it all stopped like a needle being pulled off a record because the globalists came in and said, we want a permanent deep state, we want to degrade America, we want the U.S. to lose wars, we want to then transfer American power into China and set up a system where you have a multipolar world controlled by multinational banks. You can read that in the Council on Foreign Relations by monthly publications. You can read the former editor of Newsweek saying it, Strobe Talbot. You can read, you know, when he was Under Secretary of State saying the same thing. There are tens of thousands of quotes and books and letters and art. When I say tens of thousands, that's very conservative. But they know the general public doesn't read intellectual white papers. So they tell you on the Nightly News or the New York Times it does not exist. With Trump, Look how far we've come. Almost everyone knows the Federal Reserve is private now, thanks to this show and Ron Paul and others. Almost everyone now knows that foreign banks are tax exempts. Almost everyone understands we've been sold out to China. All these huge things are happening. And then you read this amazing article. We basically had a blurb article on it that broke down the quotes and that quoted Bannon. Our headline was, Stephen Bannon says, Americans want somebody in office who isn't going to F them over. And he talks about the strategy that got record numbers of black Americans, Hispanic Americans to vote for Trump. And how the, the, the numbers show if we can deliver tax cuts and prosperity and break the back of all the sick, race-baiting, brainwashing, desperate establishment moves to, to, to mentally cripple this country and turn us into racist basket cases, if we can double down and defeat that, which we're starting to do, their whole system is over. I saw a meme last week that uh, the Democratic Party hasn't been so upset 
uh, since the Republicans outlawed slavery with the election of Trump. And that's really what we're facing. The establishment had taken over the Republican Party. They had purposely basically been loyal opposition. CIA white papers have been declassified, breaking down that since the late 60s, that's been the case. So with no real opposition, they could make it look like there was no way to ever have change. Now, the media is attacking this article and Steve Bannon saying, oh, Karl Rove claimed he created a permanent Republican supermajority. And Karl Rove said a lot of the stuff. No, he didn't. Karl Rove represented blue blood bushes that are in league with the Clintons. He represented a guy that could hardly talk, George H. Bush, H. W. son. George W. Bush. He represented the old rotting blue blood joke establishment that moved to Texas to look like they had some street cred with commoners. With this, with Bannon and Trump, it's real. They intend to get rid of taxes, $40,000 a year or less. They intend to cut corporate tax to make the jobs move back here. The big corporations wrote that to move the jobs overseas. And you read these quotes. This is pure Americana because he waited not to give the New York Times, the Washington Post interview. Well, they've been lying about him with no proof saying he's racist. Or because he criticized some Jewish people, he must be anti-Semitic. I mean, give me a break. You, you get in politics, you're Jewish. He criticizes you for what your policies are. The guy's been pro-Israel, and they flip out on you and attack you. This is this is this is why all this race baiting garbage doesn't work anymore. So he gave this interview with a reporter he's known for a while, uh, Michael uh, Wolf, because he knew he'd actually just get quoted in it. And boy, is this a good article! This is so Americana. I'm gonna start reading this now. When asked if he's a white nationalist, he says, quote, he absolutely mockingly starts laughing, rejects the idea that it is a racial line. I'm not a white nationalist. I'm a nationalist. I'm an economic nationalist, he tells me. The globalists gutted the American working class. This guy's a team from poor Democrats, by the way. You know, blue collar steel workers. The globalists gutted the American working class and created a middle class in Asia. The issue now is about Americans looking not to get effed over. If we deliver, I think you heard this before from somebody, if we deliver by we, he means the Trump White House, we'll get 60% of the white vote, 40% of the black vote, and Hispanic vote, and we'll govern for 50 years. That's what the Democrats missed. They were talking to people with companies with $9 billion market cap employing nine people. It's not reality. They lost sight of what the world's all about. Community, jobs, industry, pride, quality. In a nascent administration that seems at best random in its belief, Bannon can seem but to not just focus voice. He seems to not just be a focused voice, but almost a messianic one. Yes, and he goes on from there with populism, which you've heard here. But it isn't that Bannon and I are reading from the same, same sheet of music. We're telling you what the American system is. And everyone's acting like it's so sexy, it's so new, it's so alien. It's what made the country great. Globalism was a one-sided screw job on purpose. They wrote books admitting it. Henry Kissinger admits it. David Rockefeller wrote two books admitting it. We're going to reverse it. I want to be clear. It is so frustrating to read. I don't want to exaggerate. It's got to be more than 50 books. That's more than that. Written by the globalist. Brzezina Brzezinski, Henry Kissinger, David Rockefeller, Helmut Schmidt. I mean, I've got them out there in my office bookshelf. I ought to do a whole, you know, 20-minute live feed or something this week. In fact, I will. Or I just pull books off the shelf and open them up and where I've highlighted them and where I've shown them to people on air. Brzezinski just wrote a book, I forget the name, two years ago where he said we may have to kill millions of people to, to, to support world government because they're not going to believe us in the future. And to show how cutting edge he was, he was telling people at the Council on Foreign Relations five years ago on C-SPAN that we've already lost, world government's dead, the nationalists killed us. But imagine how frustrating it is to read white papers, to read books, to watch C-SPAN, to play the clips... And then see the New York Times come out in three articles this week, mainly about me. One of them was totally about me, the fourth article, that was actually pretty fair. I'm surprised. Three of them saying, I imagine a system called globalism. 
and how Trump believes in it. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, globalism is completely one-sided. They admitted when they sold it 50 years ago to liberals. The same folks that got civil rights passed in the country and actually meant well. It wasn't diabolical at first, at least with those that supported it. Oh, we want to build up Africa and Asia and Latin America and, and you know, uh, 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 what's happening in the East. We're going to put regulations in here that make it impossible for us to be dominant that will move those jobs there. But it wasn't to liberalize those countries. It was to set them up as tyrannies and to have basically slave labor to then bring us down to their level, not them up to our level, or them partially up. Because I'm very altruistic. I mean, if, if the idea was we went down some, they went up, I could see that, but that is a zero-sum game, not a non-zero-sum game. It's a lose-win. So the globalists are just selling us this idea, and you read this delicious article that's basically just a transcript of Steve Bannon, and I'm not going on some love fest here, it's just... The one part of the article that's not accurate, well, there's several, it's a long article, is with an administration that doesn't seem to have a soul or doesn't seem to stand for anything. Here, I'm paraphrasing. Let me find it. In a nascent administration that seems at best random in its beliefs, Bannon can seem to be not just a focused voice, but almost a messianic one. Trump's entire message is messianic. It's hope. It's change. It's cut your taxes. It's, hey, Ford's already announced it's coming back with multiple plants. First it was Kentucky. Now they're talking about Ohio. Now they're talking about bringing Apple back because there's leadership. Most people in these corporations are just yes men and women. They don't like globalism. I told you. I was ready 15 years ago to have war with the feds. I wasn't pushing physical war, but I was like, you know, they're the enemy because they're the... I didn't understand the feds didn't like it as much as I did or more. In fact, they were, I'm not kissing their ass. It's just true. I later discovered they were more awake than the general public. The problem was the public under a Hollywood trance, not knowing what was happening. If we just reached out to the corporate people, the bureaucrats, the cops, the military, nine times out of 10, they were ready to stand up more than anybody else because they were inside of it. Look at the New World Order's biggest problem. It's Edward Snowden. It's insiders. It's D.C. leaks. It's all these former military veterans like Bannon and, and Mad Dog Mattis and everybody else that are anti-New World Order. I'm not going to tell you about behind-the-scenes stuff, but you know we talk to generals. We talk to colonels. We're in contact with patriots. And the only reason they're in contact with us is there weren't a lot of people doing this five years ago. We're doing it. We're just bringing America back and here's the deal austerity being poor globalism saying being poor is good saying starving is good that's cloward and priven that's agenda 21 that's that's the new york times just a two years ago would go all these crazy people believe in something imaginary called agenda 21 and they say it's taking over to make life impossible to be able to live and pay your bills that's the stated goal of a stinking thing but the new head of NASA was quoted last week as saying, we need to live in a post-industrial world, and NASA's job is to end the high-tech era. That's like saying a Buddhist monk job is to kill Buddhist. Or a meat eater's job is to stop eating meat. It's upside down. By the way, without even looking, I ran into a whole bunch of articles here today dealing with just what I just said to understand this. I harp on this because everybody heard about it. When I mention secret testing, I mention you heard of Tuskegee. Even the dumbest person has heard of 47-year program secretly injecting black people with cephalus in three states and letting them spread it everywhere. So when I mention things like that, I go to because folks have heard of it. The carbon taxes they wanted six years ago in the latest UN model would cause roughly a billion deaths over the decade. There's already 50-something million people starving to death a year. This is the London Telegraph. I also have another stack of news pushing this. This is just on a daily basis without looking for it. Because I'm not just here saying they want to make you poor. When I mention Obama says you can't have cars or air conditioning to Africans, it's the same deal. Or, you know, going to Argentina and promoting communism. 
when communists can't even produce automobiles. This is out of the London Telegraph today. This is what we're fighting. If we sell our ideas of liberty, which always deliver, and even 20% of it gets done, it'll produce so much more wealth and choices that people are going to look at a bunch of dirty, hateful communists running around, waving guns at people like they're doing today in Austin, Texas, and say, buddy, get the hell out of our way. London Telegraph. U.S. climate commitment irreversible. That's Francis Hollande warns Donald Trump. Congress never signed on to it. Does it matter? He says you're not allowed to get off. It's illegal. They ordered our bureaucrats to do it. And Hollande says it's irreversible, just like Trump couldn't win the nomination, just like he couldn't be president. This criminal, in my view, this guy caught not paying taxes. His entire Socialist Party uh, was Swiss bank accounts. They raised taxes when he got in three years ago to 101% on the middle class and nouveau riche, new rich. And he says, you can't get out of our global carbon tax because they've all, Obama, him, they've all invested. They all own part of the carbon credit companies. Look it up. Al Gore owns the big one in London. It's called Gore and Blood. I'm not lying. His partner's named Blood. U.S. climate commitment, irreversible. Hollande warns Donald Trump. Oh, my God, you warned us. That's just the way it is. Now it gets worse. Look at this. UK researchers say tax food to reduce climate change because humans farting. Now, I told you this was coming when they started in Canada and Australia a decade ago or so. It began to phase in taxes on flatulence of farm animals that it would start with you. Now they want to tax you saying you're eating too much. Again, the ultra rich want to teach you how to consume less. So you have a culture of hating yourself so they can have everything for themselves and you're so poor they control you. So, but globalism's in big crisis. I've got news on that front. But how are they going to strike back? I got more of the Bannon interview here, too. How are they going to strike back? They're going to strike back by censoring us, and they've openly announced on Fox and CNN they're going to move to have me taken off the air. You know, uh, Raquel Phelan, who's one of our great investigative journalists and writers, wrote some of the biggest stories in history when it comes to hacking, you name it. Highly trusted by all the top hackers. And when I say all of them, I mean a lot of the top ones. He's here with his dad, who's from Sweden. Just talking to him during the break. And he was saying, your, he was like, your energy, how do you do it? Because I was animated talking to him. And I said, listen, we're overthrowing world government. I mean, we're waging war against the new world order. We're returning the republic from the hands of corporate global domination. He said, no, I get it. It's great. I get it. And he had that fire in his eyes. And listen, when I get on air, I'm fighting. I mean, I'm passionate. I, I, I open the doors to my heart. I know it comes off as obnoxious, and people act, ask, how the hell do you act like this for two, three, four hours a day? It's because it's real. I mean, I've had my ass kicked. I've had, you know, I've not been in fights in years, decades. But when I grew up in rough area, a lot of people attacking me in Dallas. I was a nice guy until I got in a fight, until I was getting hurt, and then I could do freaking backflips. You know, it, it, it's the same thing. We're under attack, people. And the only reason I've been successful is I'm promoting Americana. I know the enemy's blueprint. And I'm here to break people out of their trance. I don't like seeing people being conned. So many wealthy people I know are the coolest, hardest working people who have so many great employees and have a passion for building and a passion for innovating. But I know a lot of other wealthy people over the years, and I've got to say they're, quote, liberals who are very cloistered in their little houses, their mansions. They hate their employees. They hate their families. They hate their neighbors. They're very OCD. They're very neurotic. And they're disconnected from the land. That You don't see them doing wilderness camping. You don't see them being in a boxing club or jujitsu. You don't see them out hunting. You don't see them doing normal human things. And I think... We've got inbred elites. I mean, history shows this with royalty and things, but, but, but a more modern, wider scale distribution of this phenomenon with what Anthony Gucciardi calls aliens. And I don't mean somebody alien to the country because they're not part of your nation. I'm talking about alien in that they're trust fund, third generation trust fund kids who just are disconnected from the rest of the world and don't understand what's happening. And if you look at the Clintons, you look at the Bushes, you look at all these elites, they are totally disconnected. And someone like Trump, who's into hospitality, whose dad made their first money, Trump then 
made it 50 times bigger. I've likened it many times to, say, a tourism board of a small, let's say, North Carolina beach town. If the head of the tourism board isn't putting ads in magazines and newspapers, isn't keeping the town, you know, moving forward, isn't attracting good companies, good restaurants, good hotels, that town's going to fall apart. And Trump is literally like the local tourism board guy for America. He sees everything shutting down. He sees people not having money anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, our audience is was five times what it was a year ago. Now it's like ten times what it was a year ago. It's frighteningly large now. And there's not more money coming in. Always, as our audience got bigger, more money came in to the last few years. The economy is in frickin' shambles. Trump sees that. Trump experiences that. I don't like going to a cafeteria I've gone to since I was a child in Dallas. It's called Luby's. It's blue collar. And I never sat in line where old ladies were sitting there and couldn't afford the food that's very cheap and were upset. And I've, I, I'm not bragging. I can't help it. I start just saying, here, here's $50 bills. You ladies all have whatever you want. I, I can't stand it. To know how inflation has run, to know people's Social Security isn't paying for what they need. I want people to have wealth. I'm the biggest liberal there is. I'm the biggest frickin' bleeding heart you ever found. But I know it doesn't come from government giving you a check. It comes from producing so much wealth that even our poorest people are doing good. And Americanism did deliver. It was the apple of the world's eye. More inventions, more patents, the lowest debt, zero debt, the highest education. We were number one, and we kick your ass in a fight, too. And we got sold out in the 50s and the 60s to globalism. And we built these corporations, a world empire, on America's name. They went, you're from America? You're going to bring electricity? You're going to bring courts? You're going to bring justice? Our doors are open. And then we put Mao Zedong in power in 1949. That's been declassified. John Burt Society said that when they were founded in 56. All declassified in 2004. They took our name, an evil group of people. Some were German background, some were French background, some were Jewish, some were Hispanic. It didn't matter. They were globalists, and they looked at this big empire and, and our atomic weapons and our energy and all the smart people, and they went, oh, my God, we're going to take over the old British Empire. We're going to run everything, and we're going to get all these countries to, to basically sell out to us because we're going to move American industry to them because America was upwards of 80% of global industry in 1955. We were 80%. We were 5% of the population of the world, and we had half the wealth from 1950 until 1997. Now we've only got 35% of the wealth. They've already sucked out almost half of it. And our wealth wasn't putting other countries down. We could have actually done real deals with them to build them up, but it was designed to bring us down. So I'll just keep harping it and harping it and harping it and harping it. I'm promoting the real history. I'm pushing the answer. It's guaranteed. But China was in the Wall Street Journal, the Associated Press, and a bunch of other publications. I wasn't even trying to look for it on Friday. And the Communist Chinese Politburo, with a straight face, was in our news saying, we own your debt and we are buying Hollywood and we own a lot of your other bonds. And if you don't listen to us, we are going to implode your economy. You are not allowed to do this. You can't have one factory. And they went on to say, you need to shut down your nationalist right now. Imagine the Wall Street Journal with a straight face on Friday had the communist Chinese saying, shut us up. Shut us up. We can pull the article. I covered it for like an hour on Friday. It's on Drudge. I mean, what freaking world are we live in? And you go to China and lecture them like this? Obama's made to get off the back of the plane in China, and the diplomat comes over and tells them, shut up, it's our country. 
The arrogance of these people. They feed on their own Chinese people. They have mobile execution vans, Foxcom, Apple, Hellhole Laboratories. And all we want is a few jobs. Can we just have one factory? You got 26 or whatever it is, Foxcom factories for Apple. Can we just have one? And you're like, no, you don't have one single factory, scumbag America. Nothing. You'll get nothing and like it. To quote Judge Smells from County Shack, Spalding! Since when do we become the Spalding of the world? Oh, yeah, even mainstream media admits oh, China's taken over all six of the Hollywood production facilities. All of it's happening. Uh, the uh, the, um, the uh, headline out of the uh, Wall Street Journal was something like this. It was, China says the U.S. must take control of the Internet. We're, I'm going to find it during the break. I'm going to show it to you when we come back. And then I'm going to show you the response. Democratic pundits on CNN, Fox, you name it, saying specifically, we need to shut down these websites. We need to go after Alex Jones. Alex Jones. Alex Jones. He's so evil. And who else should we get rid of? Steve Bannon. Oh, my God. He just wants us to have a little bit of jobs, a little bit of money. Oh, my. It's so evil. All right, so the communist Chinese have teamed up with Facebook, Twitter, Google, Apple, and others to crack down on American Internet. Just absolute open treason. China doubles down on Internet controls after tough new law, just restricting all free speech. Uh, that's out of AP. This is out of Reuters. China says terrorism, fake news, imperil greater global Internet curbs. So they come out and list us as fake news. Use some weirdo professor to list us, Breitbart, you name it, as fake news. That's right. 95% of what we do is analyze your BS. Ron Paul's come out with a big list of fake news. The folks that got us into wars, people that lied to us with fake polls, folks that lied to us with fake reporters interviewing their own people. Yeah, it's CNN, ABC News, NBC, you name it. It's up on Infowars.com. But pretty hilarious. They're the fake news, saying we're the fake news. China's Internet controls will get stricter to dismay of foreign businesses. New York Times. Now the New York Times is translated into Chinese. Chinese tyrant seeks global control after Obama gave up Internet. That's right. They've handed over to an international consortium, and China says the Internet belongs to them. Thank you, Obama. So, hey, don't think they haven't struck back. We've had the PLA, People's Liberation Army, that's where the servers are, hitting us with massive denial of service attacks for two weeks. And, uh, you know, we've already got very sophisticated, large server systems, so... It just all gets redirected back, but look at this photo of your TV viewer, Austin, Texas today. This is off Reddit. Some of our crew told me about it. This is not on the news, but it was seen by one of our crew members down in front of the Capitol with their uh, semi-automatic rifles, the communists, uh, and, and, and their red bandanas with hammers and sickles saying, make racist afraid again. We have an incredible video on Infowars.com of a female reporter for Infowars, Millie Weaver, uh, in Cleveland, with communists threatening to physically attack her because she dare be on the street. They said, you don't have free speech. Get off our streets. So in a communist country, they couldn't own guns. But here, they can march on the street with their guns, and I defend their right. But if you look at these poor teenagers controlled by a bunch of UT professors, they are really, really, really uh, just absolutely pathetic people. Very, very sad. Sitting here in the lap of luxury compared to other nations, bitching and complaining with communists in Venezuela and Cuba and, and places like um, North Korea can't even produce automobiles or keep electricity on in most areas. But I know the perfect utopia has not yet been realized. No, a bunch of spoiled brats don't want to go out and get jobs. Now, continuing here, since I mentioned it, I know it sounds unbelievable. You know, look at that headline from Infowars.com. It's not even strong enough. People say we exaggerate. They threaten to physically attack Millie Weaver, spew the most horrible, awful stuff. They say she has no free speech. They pick on a woman. It's communist threaten to physically attack female reporter. That's the headline. I even called the reporter up yesterday and I said, thanks for writing this great article. But I said, we need to change the headline. It, it hasn't been. But it's just sensational. And, and we have to be sensational when they do sensational things. We can't dial it back just because, you know, we're trying to be conservative. Let's put it back on screen. 
and you look at, I don't care if they're black, white, or Hispanic. Let's put the, the video back up of Millie Weaver. These are the ugliest vampire-like pig people. Okay, I'll be honest. The white people are really ugly. Okay, the Hispanics don't actually look that ugly. I just don't know, and I'm not trying to be racial here. What is up with white communists? I mean, they are the dumbest, ugliest-looking jackasses I have ever seen in my freaking life. And the video's up on Infowars.com. But since I mentioned it, uh, again, this was on ABC News, CBS News, Fox News, CNN, everywhere. In the last three days, they're going, InfoWars is fake. InfoWars is fake. InfoWars is fake. InfoWars isn't real. All I've done for 52 minutes is show you admissions by the globalists where they're pushing that you should be poor and have nothing. Or I show you what they actually say. They're the fake news that lie us into wars. They're the fake news that lied about who was going to win the uh, the uh, whole campaign. I kept telling you it was going to be Trump. Bannon's in the New Deal going. We had internal polls. It's freaking 15 points ahead. They didn't want anybody to say that because they thought it might make you be too secure. But I said, listen, they're using this to make people not show up and think it's all over. I don't care. Folks shouldn't have told me early on that we were dominating. And I went and checked with other pollsters. They said, yeah, how do you know that? So I, I mean, I broke ranks, folks. I, I'll freaking tell you the truth here. I'm, I'm doing it. You know, that's just how I am. I mean, I always, I was not told that in confidence, by the way, early on. Just that, that later, they never wanted to come out and say it. <clears throat> so, again, we can show Ron Paul's article on InfoWars.com. He's put out a list of fake news. And all of them lied about WMDs, lied about all these wars. They're bipartisan frauds. He lists them. Ron Paul reveals hit list of alleged fake news journalists. The list contains the culprits who, again, lied us into all these wars, you name it, Stephanopoulos and all the usual culprits, but, but and people that lied about being under military attack and their helicopter shot down, Brian Williams, they're all there. Oh, by the way, Bloomberg over the weekend put out fake tweets from Trump that were admittedly fake, saying he, he ripped, I'm sorry I ripped off students, I'm a criminal, ha, ha, ha. They weren't real tweets. I mean, they're hitting next level, folks. But since I mentioned it, they start the whole piece out saying we should shut these websites down. They're bad. They're evil. They're dangerous. And then he keeps saying, isn't it dangerous to do that to shut them down? Tucker Carlson has his own show. I think he's one of the best guys on Fox. Not that he comes on the show. I like him. Uh, you know, he's had a good metamorphosis over the years. He was always a patriot, but he couldn't do it. Now the season's here. He can he can be a sunshine patriot. And that's good. We like Carl. Tucker Carlson, you know, they've chastised him about coming on, but that's not what it's about. The point is he's doing a good job of his own show now, weeknights at 7 o'clock Central on Fox. He's on there with Jessica Tarlov, and you can watch the whole six-minute video, but here's just a little bit of it saying, you know, Alex Jones needs to be discredited. When is he going to lose his credibility? Well, when you stop lying, lady... Problem. I, well, there, I mean, I guess there are two tracks here, Christian. One is the idea that people didn't vote for Hillary because they just didn't know enough, because they're dumb. And that's the implication <laughs> of what the left is saying, and the president just said. But the idea that Facebook or Google or Twitter could remove things without our knowledge, shouldn't that get us up in arms? Yeah, absolutely. I'm a libertarian, and I think we need to let the market decide what is worthwhile and what is not. The actual fake news sites, they will lose credibility and eventually their audience. When, when will Alex Jones lose credibility? Well, I mean, when is there's an audience. Happen? There's when an the audience for Alex I mean, like, Jones. Look, yeah. we, we need to let everything get posted. Otherwise, it's going to be up to Facebook or some other institution or worse, the government, to decide what fake news is. The problem, Tucker, is that it's a very slippery slope to define fake news. For example, uh, is a enough. climate change denier promoting fake news? Yeah, that, they say I arrest you if you deny carbon taxes. The really juicy clip is on InfoWars because she's like, China's doing good. It wants the good news for his people. Are you saying China shouldn't stop fake news? I mean, that's not even the strongest part. In fact, I'm going to play it in the next segment. We ought to find the whole six-minute clip. Do we have the whole six-minute clip? I'm tempted to play the whole stinking thing because, I mean, you're actually seeing her, and Carl's is like, it's dangerous to do that. She's like, Alex Jones, okay, he's a power. Meanwhile, we have China, because he mentions, he goes, well, China wants us to censor these American websites. She's like, well, they, the good, yeah. You've got a Democrat on TV saying, do what China says, shut down Alex Jones. I'm a Democrat strategist. What a fruit ball. We're going to take your calls as well, get to a bunch of clips. 
why they're trying to stir up race war, why they want to kill the free market, how we defeat them, the return of America, the rebirth of the republic, it's all coming up. Now, the well, Sunday transmission is a different broadcast than the weekday that is still syndicated through GCN. I take phone calls from up there via the satellite. This is our own in-house deal, so it's a different phone number. They've asked me to say that because it kills their phone bill. We get 20-something thousand calls when I get the number out in an hour. I, we have a computerized system. 23,000 is our record. So let me just give you the number here. I feel sorry for the network. People call the wrong number. It's 877-789-ALEX, 877-789-2539, 877-789-2539. And by the way, if you disagree with me, tell folks you'll go to the head of the line. You're calling from a foreign country on your own dime. Same deal. Just let us know. We don't screen your calls, but have a good phone. Be able to talk. Don't be too drunk. 877-789-ALEX, uh, 877-789-2539-ER. Briefly, uh, we have the new incredible nootropic brain booster with the organic known super enzymes, chemicals that are all healthy, you name it. Brain force. Everything we do is game changing. Everything we do is over the top. It's now 20% more in each bottle, an even stronger formulation. Now it's 20% more caplets, powdered caplets, big old jumbo pills, but, but also... A new formulation, even stronger. It's amazing. Quite frankly, I don't need it myself most of the time. I, I take selenium with it, and it's to the moon without a rocket. Our do bio true selenium. Infowarslive.com. And be part of fighting the very tip of the spear. I mean, look, we're just wreaking havoc. It's so legendary. I can't even believe it. I'm waking me up out of this Matrix dream. I mean, kind of hard to believe. I like, cast myself as a superhero in an alternate dimension. Uh, so, 888-253-3139 is the number to call and ask about all the different specials. Seven days a week, 365 days a year. I see the phone system loading up at 877-789-ALEX. Look, I get fired up. I get excited. and Because and, I'm not in a trance. I'm trying to get you out of your trance. A lot of you are out of it. You know, the reason we're reaching so many people. But we are far from out of the woods yet. But I got to tell you, very positive things are happening. I was in Lockhart. Outside Austin, Texas, uh, one of the barbecue capitals of the world, and I was mobbed by black, Hispanic, and white people in the multiracial town. Where everybody just loves each other. My whole life growing up, everybody just loves each other, except in Dallas. There was a lot of racist crap there, but everywhere else in Texas has been great. Eh, a few places in East Texas got problems too. Let's just ninety percent. And it was just so great to be there. So great to be around all these wonderful people eating the best barbecue in Texas there at Smitty's. But then I just think about the globalists and how divorced from reality they are and how they could be on TV with the communist Chinese calling for me to be shut down, others to be shut down, and they have Democratic pundits on TV saying, yes, time to shut down the fake news when they're the known fake news kings of the world. Here's a clip of that I was mentioning, a larger clip. We're going to come back, take your phone calls. Well, here's something new. In the past 24 hours, many on the left have stepped up demands that companies like Facebook, Google, and Twitter, the companies through which almost all of your news flows, censor so-called fake news. That is, stories that some believe helped Donald Trump defeat Hillary Clinton. Such politically counter- By the way, hit pause for a minute. I can't help not it. Be I didn't make the big point. Do you understand they did this after the Communist Chinese called for it with the Democratic Party? The Democratic Party are such frickin' Communist Chinese agents, they take public orders from them. It just hit me that I haven't been upset about this properly. They gotta be arrested, folks. They got The damn commie Chinese are in the news saying, shut us down, and then they go on TV and say it and mention it? I, I, I mean, I don't... Uh, what is it gonna take here? Let's go back to the clip, sorry. Allowed, they argue a point that the Chinese authorities have been making for many years. President Obama weighed in on the controversy today during a trip abroad to Germany, clearly siding with the censors. Watch this. If we are not serious about facts and what's true and what's not, uh, and particularly in an age of social media where so many people are getting uh, their information in sound bites and snippets off their phones. Not from liars uh, like you. If, if we can't discriminate, oh, discriminate. Between that, that's racist. Serious arguments and propaganda. You are a sack of filth. Then we have problems. Bus bucket. That's right. The politician in chief lecturing us about propaganda. <laughs> so should the government and media giants begin clamping down on information they think might hurt the democratic cause? <sighs> yeah, Jim Jong Il does. Tara Love, a democratic strategist, and Kristen Tate, a contributor at the Hill, and it is great to see you both. 
Miss Tarloff, I will start with you. Shocking. <laughs> so yeah, the eight foot arrogant Brunhilde. Another person's news, and the idea that these media giants, who really have more control over the information we receive than anybody's ever had Absolutely. in history, way more than William Randolph first ever she had, she wants to mount white start males ding dings on the wall. They think she doesn't even want to. She just hates America. Should scare all of us, shouldn't it? Well, I think that censorship is obviously something that we need to take oh, yeah. seriously, especially as we, you know, welcome take seriously, Donald Trump. We should be against it. But China does that. Yes, I, yeah. I do believe that, but I do think that we do need to make a concerted effort to make sure that we are getting good, real news. I mean, this is but who's, who's we? In there? The American populace, the world populace, no, the and those in China deserve good news. Right. Oh. And, I, and I think what President Obama's oh. talking about. I mean, first of all, he's oh. frustrated, right? And he's been frustrated throughout the campaign because he's felt like it's been a fact you know, vortex that Donald Trump has created where he said things off the cuff and gotten away with it, whereas Hillary Clinton has kind of gotten slammed for all of this. And we've debated this over and over again. And Oh, the media was all for Trump. That. Did you hear that load well, of BS? People, like, I believe his name is Pete Horner. This guy Miss fake, fake news. Listen to this idiot. That he put out through the election. Cycle. Everything he she says is a load of BS. That, there were protesters paid $3,500 right. to go to Trump rallies. And he she said was a porta potty in another life. Link. It's abcnews.co, not She's .com. Fully, you know what? Conway it's the internet. That's Corey right. Lewandowski did. And if people aren't being smart about the news that they're consuming, I do think we have a problem. I, well, there, I mean, I guess there are two tracks here, Christian. One is the idea that people didn't vote for Hillary because they just didn't know enough because they're dumb. And that's the implication of what <laughs> You had a freaking cult of an evil yeah. hag, a collapsing, drooling, psycho hag, and you're so freaking delusional and hate humanity so much, you thought you could f force feed us this turdurkin and shove Hillary up our ass. It didn't work. All right, let me go to your phone calls. There's a lot of news I want to cover as well. And, and, I, and I'm going to get to this later after I take some calls. A lot got made of the uh, Vice President-elect Pence, Governor Pence, Vice President Pence, nicely went to pretty much the, the all-black cast uh, of this uh, play, Hamilton. And they booed him and they got in his face and said he was a racist. They're the moral high ground. They're the God. They're above you. They have the class elitism. You're, you're bad inherently because you're white. And I was remembering uh, six months ago when this, this place started that they put ads out saying whites need not apply. Now that's fine to have an all black play. Fine. Then Pence goes to your play and you piss on him. And then. He comes out and says, I wasn't offended by what was said and takes the high road. Very classy. I got to tell you, I'm very impressed with Pence. I don't like some of his pro-war stuff, but he is pro-life. He is pro-gun. And I just, uh, he just comes off as a very real guy. He's, they'll make a news issue out of this, but he's reached out to the show and says he appreciates the work we're doing. Uh, all I want is him to cut our taxes, secure our borders, not start a bunch of wars with Russia, not bring jihadis into the country, uh, and just bring the country together. I mean, when you watch how ridiculously racist the mainstream media is in the name of fighting racism, it's just insane. And it's very sad because I legitimately care about everybody. I don't just say that so you like me. I say what I really think. And I know that free market capitalism is the way to go for everybody. I know it creates the science. It creates the life extension. It creates the civilization. It creates the wealth. It creates the choices. The problem is it creates so much wealth in a few generations, we become spoiled, rotten jackasses that don't appreciate all the incredible things we've got. Our poorest people are doing better than most people in this world. I was horrified by America becoming a police state and doing bad things because I loved her so much, not because I hated her. The people that pointed out America's wrongs only wanted control to get control and do stuff five times worse and then say it was all okay. I'm rarely wrong, but I'm such a bleeding heart dumbass that I tacitly stood by and didn't oppose Obama in 2008. I quickly learned how wrong I was. But, I mean, he was running against McCain, who's so evil. I mean, I could see how I did that. What a deceiver. What a liar. What a race baiter. And now the communist Chinese come out in a statement I read earlier. New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Associated Press, Reuters. I can't even believe they did it. And said, censor your nationalists. Censor your Trump supporters, Zuckerberg. Censor them now. We own your debt. You shut them down. You shut them down now. That makes me 
at a genetic level, want to open a can of kick-ass. I mean, you talk about rubbing it in. Can you imagine if our media told China, crack down your people? Our media doesn't complain when they crack down their people. It's the opposite, as they oppress their people. And the leftist, everything's racism. They never oppose any real corruption. They, I've had the New York Times call me. I've had CNN call me in the last two years, and they say it happened 10 years ago, 15 years ago, too. CNN, I've been on CNN repeatedly, and they'll ask me when I'm criticizing China. They go, are you anti-Asian? And I never even play the card and go, no, my sister is Asian, adopted. I was brought up in a family that was colorblind. It was used against me, of course. Uh, but I just go, no, I'm talking about the people that oppress China and control China and are using their people. You know Tiananmen Square. Those are good people. They're under communist control. Like, are you against Russians? No, I'm against the Soviet system they had. I'm going to go to break, come back and take calls, but... It's just frustrating that I know I'm right. I know the actuaries. They have the algorithms. They know that taxing people under $40,000 a year doesn't even pay the coffers and creates family breakdown, societal breakdown, crime. No one under 50000 should be paying. It ought to be Trump saying under forty, no taxes. That's on his plan. It's on MakeAmericaGreatAgain.gov, but no one else even knows it. Do you know what ten or twelve thousand dollars a year will do for working families making forty thousand a year? Do you have any idea? Do you know what cutting middle class taxes by thirty percent is going to do? They think you're so dumb. I just keep harping on the same stuff. They think he wants to cut corporate tax because he's overseas. He already admits he uses the corrupt system to pay no tax overseas. Donald Trump's giving you a system where he'll have to pay taxes, but he wants there to be jobs and industry. Like Bannon said, we got to have some jobs. We got to have something here or there's nowhere to spend the damn money. But the globalists want to have a pissing contest. I go back to that. It's all about dominating us where we don't have anything where they can dictate the terms of our settlement, our defeat, our, Ver our Versailles treaty. We're not going that route anymore. We're done. Trump isn't out to get us. That's why the globalists are pissed. Can you imagine being the managers over America that just conquered the world? And you've merged the British Empire. It's the 1950s. And the United States is 80% of global production. Americans back then were like 60% of the wealth. It was 50 by the 90s. Now we're 30-something. And you make a decision to carve it all up and give it to elite families and robber barons to sell industries and not even allow them via regulations in the United States or Europe and move them. Can you imagine the power these people got? It's what Bannon said in this interview with The Hollywood Reporter. He goes, there's a whole bunch of corporations that are five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen, twenty dollars, twenty billion dollars. And they've got nine employees. How the hell do you have a let me read the exact quote. I, mean, just, I don't want to paraphrase it here for you. He goes, with companies with 9 billion market cap employing 9 people, it's not reality. They've lost sight of what the world's about. $9 billion company with 9 employees. What the hell is that? And all these Elites are getting armored fortresses, bodyguards. They're hiding out. They're all scared. You should be scared. What the hell's your problem? And it's not enough that you robbed everybody. Then you lecture everyone how free market's bad and want to pull the ladder up to the hot air balloon so nobody else can get up there with you. You're like the rich people on the Titanic. When they hit the iceberg, the captain tells the first class, get to the lifeboats. We're going to lock the doors to the poor people in steerage. This happened. So... The lifeboats all leave, on average, 10% full, and so thousands die because the elite had to be taken care of. Same crap. You're going to sink the whole ship, dumbasses. You got to stop it. It's uncool. And to all the idiots that bought into it, all the poor people, stop being chumps. Go with America. It'll deliver. All right, I want to go to your phone calls in this segment next, and then I, I've got a lot of other news and clips I need to get to as well. 
Uh, Rand Paul, it's good to see him now trying to get along with Trump. He says he's very pleased to see General Flynn uh, to be the national security advisor uh, who has said the Iraq war was wrong. We targeted the wrong country. It should have been Saudi Arabia. Uh, it's just good people are getting in there, folks. Uh, Mad Dog Mattis, um, people like that are just good. They're patriots. They're anti-New World Order. They're the type of people other countries are going to be scared of. They don't start fights. They finish them. And if Russia doesn't get in our business, Russia has nothing to worry about. China is going to get its ass kicked up one side and down the other. China's little attempted takeover of the U.S. the last couple of years is the real reason all this is happening. I can give you the inside baseball. Hillary Clinton is a confirmed Chinese agent who represents the president of China. Now, I told you that years before it came out in WikiLeaks, but I was told this by high-level DOD, high-level CIA. I mean, the treason just got so naked, Hillary was so full of chutzpah, bravada, that it was just over the top. And again, Drudge has a story up about the cult of Hillary. That's what I've always called it. Alternate's calling it that, too. This is a repudiation of this cult. I mean, this crazy, warmongering criminal. I mean, I had problems with Bernie Sanders, socialism, but at least he has some credibility. He was who he said he was. He wasn't a warmongering mass murderer. And they stole the nomination from him. How can all these Democrats run around? You know, I, I shot a video yesterday. I'm going to tell the story and go to a call from Sydney, Australia, and others. But I went to a little diner. I like to go to in East Austin. I've been going there about a year. It's an old diner, but it's been refurbished. It's a nice place. And I go, you know, I want to shoot a video before we go in. And I'm in the back parking lot. No one's around. And two guys walk out. And I see them kind of laughing at me and flipping me off. And I ignore them while I'm doing the Facebook mentions. They get in their car, drive by, and go, F you, Alex. It's on tape. And, I go, and the video I was doing live was about bullying, how they just are so pissed at us. So I go, I go inside, an older guy, like 67 or so, 70, with his wife. He's had wedding rings on. Comes in. I open the door. Oh, hi. Open the door. Let him in. I go in, eat. And I'm walking out. We're going to the shooting range, strangely enough, and Buckley's behind me. And I'm, and I'm there with some of the crew. We're going to meet Gucciardi out there. We go shooting every you know, few weeks. The shooting range is kind of close to East Austin. But we didn't have guns on us. It's just you know, the, the back of the truck is filled with them. And, or back of the SUV. And, well, he comes out and goes, just get in the car, get in the car. This guy's mad dog. And I'm, huh? And I get in the car, I'm parked right in the front. And the guy comes out and his wife, I'm getting the car and his wife goes this way. And he comes up and he bows up and he's baring his teeth. And I'm looking, like, what's going on? He just shows me under his windbreaker his gun. Like, it would scare me. And, his, and I, I wasn't really even scared. I was more like, what? And then he kind of acts weird, like he was satisfied and walked around the corner. That's what Democrats are doing now. I mean, I can't go to liberal areas now. I've talked about this. They flip out, folks. I mean, they're crazy. I'm like Mr. Americana. All I want is prosperity. All I want is lower taxes. There are armed communists marching all over Austin. It's not even on the news. No one even seems to care. Uh, just God help us. I, I don't know what's happened in this country, but I tell you, I tell you, it's a crazy time. Okay, let's go to uh, John in Sydney, the capital of Australia. Always want to visit that 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 great continent, John. Thank you for uh, holding. Thanks for calling. You're on the air. Hi, Alex. Um, I just wanted to talk about uh, the incredible opportunity that Donald Trump has now, and the example he's uh, shown the American, the patriots in America, of one man standing up and entering the arena, and what he's done just as one man. And I think it's an incredible opportunity for all the you know, all the patriots in America to do their part in their own little way, whether it be, you know, dominating their local industry or entering into politics on all three levels of government. I think it's a testament to what, what power we can do as individuals when we enter the arena. You just said it. And, and think about this. He truly intends to just cut taxes and do fair stuff. He's only, they've had their neck on, they've had their foot on our neck. All he's got to do is take the foot off our neck and we're going to soar and look at how the euro's in trouble. Look at Russia pulling out of globalism. Look at how nationalism, I know in Australia nationalism's rising, correct? Uh, it is, but th unfortunately there's a, lo a much smaller liberty movement here than in America, although we do have less social problems. A lot of people are still... Well, let me asleep. caution you. Um, I I've been to Australia. I know you're great folks. Kind of like they, compared to Texas, a lot of, you know, grassroots people. But listen... 
it starts small. It explodes quickly. That's why they're so scared of it, brother. I know they target the liberty movement in Australia. They wouldn't be doing that if they didn't know it had the seeds of victory. Sure. Um, and the other thing is I, I would um, encourage Mr. Trump or President Trump to not go easy on the globalists because they're very dangerous at the moment, and, they, and we, we do know they will strike back. I believe he should prosecute and arrest the globalists and do the biggest RICO case in history. I mean, we know they have trillions um, of stolen money over, over many, many decades, and I think that money should go back to the people of the United States. And, and by the way, Europe, Australia, you've all, we've all been robbed. China's been given the monopoly over rare earth minerals in Australia. I've, I've, I mean, I've read about that. I mean, it's just outrageous. Um, the other thing is, um, I, I looked at the election numbers in a very detailed way with the demographics, and the numbers look very, very fishy to me um, compared to 2012. There's a number of things that just don't look right when you when you actually analyze the election results, even down to certain counties. Well, sure, go over it. Bev Harris, who's a liberal Democrat, said they stole five states basically from Trump. Uh, it was a huge landslide. So, so she concurs that she saw you know precincts where 100 percent voted for Hillary in key battleground areas. I mean, this was happening. Uh, do you think that a, a Trump administration will expose that that fraud? and potentially, um, you know, implicate the Democratic Party? Let me tell you, as soon as he gets in in 61 days, the gloves are off. Uh, they already know that. That's why they got Chuck Schumer uh, slamming he's going to try to block Senator Sessions. Sessions has the guts to prosecute as Attorney General, so we got to get him in. But, I mean, what does that tell you? When Trump puts the guy saying prosecute the Clintons in as Attorney General, what does that signal? Well, it signals that he's serious um, about changing America and not just Listen, putting in milk. I agree. The death threats he's had, the stuff that's going on, I can't even, I don't even know 10% of it. Let me tell you, it's epic. The people he's surrounding himself with are pure nationalists. He's got a few navigators like Previs and folks in there to get stuff done, but Trump knows what he's doing. He is, he is kamikaze committed, okay? That's why they're so scared. Trump is ready to die. He doesn't want to die. But that's why when they thought a guy was pulling a gun on him or whatever, or the guy that tried to attack his other deal with a gun, Trump just stands up, and the Secret Service has to drag him off. He just he thinks there's a gun. He just stands up and gets ready to take it. I'm telling you, because he knows they kill him. He's an even bigger martyr. The guy is, he's heaven sent, man. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Absolutely. And, um, and the other thing is, and I, I'm, I'm sure this is already being done, is he needs the support of, of all the patriots, especially the patriot leaders like yourself and others, um, and, and maybe you're already doing this, but I, I think people like you and, and Michael Savage should be writing blueprints for a President Trump um, just because you're, you know, you've been doing this for, for decades and you know where well, all the I mean, let me leave it at this. The media has figured out that I do talk to Trump some. Uh, here's the deal. He's his own man. He gets it. He knew this before I was born. But, yes, well, Stephen Bannon knows as much as I do or more. He runs the show with Trump. And that's why they're crapping themselves, because Stephen Bannon is a patriot. He came from blue-collar, hard-working liberal Democrats. He gets the betrayal. He says it. He hates them. He hates them. He's, he's a real Democrat. So get ready, folks, for real populism. There's a crazed abandon. You tune into the greatness of the republic, the providence that is America. And I can tell you, Donald Trump, Stephen Bannon, people like that, I don't, I don't know about Rince Priebus and all them, they really understand we've been screwed over. And it's not about pissing on other countries. It's about letting America shine. It's under globalism. You can't have that country that dominates. And they understand what they're releasing. And it's, it's just this thrill that we're there presiding over releasing the Kraken. You want the big secret. That's why the enemy's so pissed right now. Uh, we want to turn people loose. We want to have the dynamo run wild. We want the American system to dominate and totally mount globalism on the wall. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's real. It's proven itself. It's power, raw, independent, free association. Not a bunch of creepy bankers screwing people over, trying to make poor people poor so you can rule over them. What the hell is that? Turn them loose. Sure, some of us might be above them, but it doesn't matter. The real pleasure in life is seeing people excel. But those of us that love liberty and love justice are blind. 
We're not like these scumbags that want to see people under their control. We got to get in their mind, folks. Now, I wanted to get Larry Nichols just to pop in. He's kind of player in the week for longer. Former top Clinton insider to give us his take on the appointments that are happening. All I care about is Ford's coming back. Apple says they're coming back. The globalists are crapping their pants. Bannon is talking about the return of 1776. It's, it's all pure veritas and uh, breaking the back of the globalists and, and actually empowering the impoverished. I mean, it's beautiful. It's real. It's got the system panicking. Global, globalism's in crisis everywhere. Turkey's pulling out of the EU. The New World Order's in crisis. The EU isn't some American instruction for our power. It's against us. Let it fall. We'll go to Larry here in a minute. Let's go to phone calls. Who's up first here? Michael in Dallas. You're on the air. Hey, Alex. Thank you for taking my call. I just want to preface real quick. I am an avid InfoWars supporter. I've been taking super male vitality for more than two years. I have spent thousands of dollars supporting the InfoWars. I have five Hillary for prison t-shirts. Well, thank you. You're Thanks awesome. We I wouldn't went. be here without you. I thank you. Go ahead. Well, you got it. So that being said, I want to talk about your Jesse Ventura interview, and it's relevant to the protest and the, and the, uh, against the Electoral College. Mr. Ventura substantiated his claim that the Electoral College is no good uh, by comparing them to uh, senatorial and gover uh, governor elections. Well, here's where Mr. Ventura is dead wrong. The presidential election is the only general election that involves all 50 states. Exactly. From, gov right, from governor to door catcher, it is confined to the state to which you reside. So naturally, those would be up and down votes. If there was no electoral college, Alex, California would have decided the fate of this country. Sir, Trump sir, I'm for the Electoral College. Let me be clear. And like, I, I've known Ventura. I'm loyal to friends. I've known him 10 years. He has gotten more and more Democrat. I think he's bullied by Hollywood. And I just, you know, he, he has to come on the show. I don't want to sit there and, you know, I mean, it's very annoying. I mean, I absolutely get what you're saying. And obviously, Trump's the populist. Obviously, the elite tried to beat him. Obviously, the Liberty Movement took over the Republican Party. Obviously, this is a delicious day. And he knows Donald Trump. I know that they know each other. They've hung out a lot for 30 years. And it's just like, it's just crazy. I, I don't, I, believe me. Well, he's un-American as far as I'm concerned, Alex. So he's no friend to you. He's no friend to me. He's no friend to this country. And then he was saying how he's going to go back to Mexico. Well, you know what? Go back, Ventura, and keep your lip tartarian mouth shut because we don't need you. Let, let me just add this point. I love Mexico. It has great resources, great people. It never got a free system. It was always about insiders. It was always about gangs. And so you look at the Texas border with Mexican cities. Nice border with Texas. Horrible over the border. I don't like that. I don't go, oh, good, we're better than them. I know their system has fallen. It's sad. We're going to go that way. The globalists want that. And so I hear what you're saying. I, I just... Um, I don't get into a Ventura bashing fest. I don't even have Ventura on that much because I don't want to tear into him. You know, I've got a weak spot for people I've known forever. But actually, I agree with you and I hear what you're saying. I absolutely hear what you're saying. And between Hillary and, and, and Trump, there was no choice. Now, he had to admit, if Trump can stop war with Russia, I'll support him. He did. He did. Okay? Michael, I appreciate your call. I, I hear what you're saying. I don't. It, Ventura isn't even, it's not even worth getting into, Okay. I, I, I hear what you're saying. You know, I want to go to our guest who's going to pop in briefly. We'll be back with us later uh, during the week. I want to get him on, Larry Nichols, uh, you know, to talk about his view on all this and this election and anti-globalism and why the elites are so s upset. I got to tell you, though, Larry, you're a smart old Green Beret guy. Put the Clintons in office at first. Man, I'm out in Austin. I've never experienced this. And my, my, you know, my grandma's from here. You know, we raised Colonel Travis's son on my mama's side of the family. So, you know, I mean, we've been in this county since the, since it wasn't a you know wasn't a wasn't a country, much less a state. The Democrats, man, are in my face on the street. They're pulling guns on me. They're in my face. They are freaking flipping. What's going on? Well, you're seeing Alex. You're seeing what they've been wanting fall right in front of their eyes, and they can't take it. Remember, the elitists. Remember, these liberals, Alex, they're bullies. Oh, they don't use muscle. They think their intellect is so incredibly important that they bully us around. 
But now's the time, Alex, to stop it. Stop it. You know, we won the battle. We won a battle. We did with Trump. Trump went in against Hillary. What an incredible battle. But we're still in the war, buddy. We're still in the war. There's one thing. I know, and I'm trying not to be to physical, do. but let me tell you, these are sacks of weakness. I mean, I'm these dead. sons of bitches want to fight. Good God, they have no idea what they're about to face. Well, I assure you this. They do not want to come around me, even in my decrepit state. I assure you they'll regret it. They'll regret it. Don't come in my face. Don't get in my face trying to pull that stuff. But I'll tell you this. What we've got to do, Alex, is we've got to unify. While we've got momentum, while we've got a president in the White House. I agree. We've got to get fully behind him. Get behind him. And there's one last thing we got. One last thing we got to do, Alex. And that state's right. You want to drain the swamp? You want to get rid That's of the That's what Trump keeps saying. Washington? He says everything goes back to the state. Send it back to the state. Send it back. States need to rule themselves. Hey, you want to have illegals running all over your state? Fine. Vote them in. If you don't, vote them out. But don't. I wouldn't even be in against the illegals cold. if they weren't above the law when they drunk drive and stuff. That's what's crazy. The new sheriff of Austin says they can drunk drive, be above the law, anything. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? All we heard during this campaign was all oh, these rednecks. If, if when Hillary wins, not if when Hillary wins, all these rednecks are threatening marching in the street. Let me assure you, there wouldn't have been any march. There'd been a lot of mad people, no doubt. But look. Trump's hey, what do you make of in. communist armed marching in Austin? Of what? They have armed communists marching in Austin now, threatening people. Well, they've been communists for a long time. It's time for Americans to stand up for America, Alex. I'm tired of cowing down to communists. I'm tired of cowing down to liberals. I'm tired of cowing down to Mexicans. I'm tired of cowing down to Muslims. This is a time for revival. A revival, a revival of America. And all no, I hear you, but let's get straight on this. White people uh -huh. killed all their kids, and Mexicans are a lot of great people. A lot of them want to be patriots. I talk to them, and I mm -hmm. get the fact that a lot are anti-America from brainwashing, but isn't it time to just embracing it, everybody to be Americana? Uh, Alex, it is for those that want to come here legally. You know, the key is, when you come here illegal, you're illegal. No, no, I get that. If I was in Mexico, I'd be illegal. I know I understand that. All I care about is ideology. I oh, want to yeah. win this thing long term like Bannon does. I don't give a damn what color you are. As long as you want free market, private property, Second Amendment, families, I'm for you. We'll be right back. Let's stay there. We're going to come back and take phone calls with Larry Nichols. All right, I want to run through calls real quick with a quick comment or statement. And then my good friend Larry Nichols, former Clinton top insider, can chime in. Let's talk to Bill in Missouri. Bill, you're on the air worldwide. Go ahead. Thanks for calling. Brief on this. Uh, I had a stroke in uh, last January, so brief. Uh, bear with my speech a little bit. Um, I was wondering if you can uh, agree with me or not. If Could it be possible that Trump puts all the liberal journalists, all the fakers, out in the hallway and let all the conservative um Journalists like Sean Hannity, Greta Van Susten, Brett Bear from Fox, and, uh, you know, uh, journalists like yourself, right up on the front, on the front sets, front seats for, uh, to attend President Trump. Well, you're saying bear with you. This is a huge point I could spend a whole three hour show on. We're not, I'm not asking for even though I've been offered tickets to the inauguration, I want to be out with the crowds where the action set, and we're going to be there. I'm not asked, hey, can I have my White House press pass for our new bureau, even though we'd probably get one, because it's almost like weird to even be associated with it. I want to be on the outside where we're truly independent. But the mainstream media is so jealous and so freaked out that that's what they're all about, is it all being controlled. And I do like the fact that Trump doesn't tell them where he's going for dinner. They go, for your security, tell us where you're going. Well, that's for his insecurity. The Secret Service is telling him, don't tell the media they're the enemy where you're going. So I like the fact that he's breaking with convention, not following protocol to tell the MSM everywhere he's going. It's important to lower their power. It's, it's great that he's going to spend half the year at his own his own mansion or his own his own tower. It's, it, again, it's about breaking with the establishment system. Amazing points, Bill. Thank you so much. Uh, Larry Nichols comments on that. Uh, you know, I agree 100%. Look, Donald Trump's in a position that we haven't had a president in for as long as I can remember, and that's been a long time. 
And I think Donald Trump knows who his friends are, and he certainly knows who his enemies are. And I think left alone, Trump's going to deal with it. He's going to deal with it properly, Alex. You know, he can't block out the mainstream. Media. I talked to folks that were dinner with him the other night. They said he wouldn't stop and eat dinner for an hour. All he did was shake hands with tears in his yep. eyes and say, I'm going to yep. deliver. I'm going to cut your taxes. That wasn't egomania. <laughs> he, 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 is, he, he wasn't perfect before, but as he said, he's changed. Going okay. through these trials has made him, you know, yes. from Gandalf the Gray to Gandalf the White. And Alex, I think it would kill Donald Trump more than anybody I've ever heard of. It would kill him to break his word, Alex. I think he is more committed to keeping his word than he was the day he started running. I think he has seen the American people. He's been supported by the American people. And I'd, I'd have to he told me privately, he said, I'm going to call you within a week of being elected president. It's guaranteed. And I appreciate your spirit. And I feel that spirit at these rallies. And all we talked about was, I don't want to tell the media. It was just so wild. <laughs> all I can tell you is that guy's for real. That's why they're crapping their pants. That's right. That's right. That's why they hate him so. And I assure you, they're going to attack him viciously. But I promise you. Donald Trump, from everything I've seen, and we've lived with him now for 16, 18 months, everything we've seen, he hadn't backed down, and I do not expect him to back down now. Why would he? He's president. He has yeah, what do you make of Sessions? What do you make of Sessions being the, v, uh, the uh, attorney general? Let me tell you, Jeff Sessions I've known for 25 years. He's the one person in Washington, D.C. Jeff, I've known, and if there's a man, Alex, that has kept his word to me all these years. A man that's been true to this country all these years is Jeff Sessions. Well, that's what they say. He's totally fearless. Man. Totally fearless. You know, and then the other thing that we've got to look at is think about this, Alex. When Trump picks his first appointment, and I say his first appointment for the Supreme Court, that's the first step in setting us free. Right there, because he can end the power of the... No, I know. Mob. I know. That's why I'm afraid they're going to try to kill him. Let's take another phone call. Let's talk to Cindy. Let's talk to folks in Pennsylvania. Cindy, thanks for holding her on the air with Larry Nichols. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, Larry. Hi, Alex. Um, I'm calling in. I'm really bugged by all this I'm seeing about assassinate Trump, assassinate Trump. Oh, they got That's top Democrats all over the news. Listen, if I called for that of Obama, they would arrest me. I don't want Obama to die. Why are they allowed to do that? That they shouldn't be. And I'm really I'm really offended by that. Why don't we do an all uh counter assassinate Soros? See, well, well, hey, let's just No, no, no. We don't we don't go there, Cindy. We just don't. Cuz Alex is right. We make statements like that, folks. Don't doubt it. We make a statement like that. We'll be behind bars quick. Look, the Secret Service is going to, they know what they're up against. They're going to protect Donald Trump. I assure you of that. So, and another thing, why doesn't Haiti come out and sue the Clinton Foundation for robbing them of all that money? No, I agree, and, and Trump's ready to push for that. I appreciate your call, Cindy. Great points. Let me just say something. I don't want to give out inside baseball, but in 60 days he loses this trump is really smart the secret service is great they know how to protect somebody when they're under attack they don't understand humet and and groups down the road and people on top roofs and guys with you know missiles and and trump was smart enough to get a super hardcore dod team uh of people that, that nobody else knows about and i'm just revealing this now he has dod uh, black ops protecting him right now, and there's already a push to get rid of his DOD support. This is a special president, folks. We need the Secret Service to follow the president's order, not make an issue out of it, and we need DOD patriots there on the ground with President Trump. And Alex, I know the group that he has, and let me assure you, they will take care of long-range hits. Trust me, the Secret Service, you're exactly right. They'll do wonderful work close-range. But the bunch you're talking about, I've known them, served with most of those guys. And I assure you, for two miles away, you don't want to get in their way. You just don't. Well, Larry, I'm going to have you back up for 30 minutes this week during the weekday show. God bless you. I appreciate you joining us. There goes Larry Nichols. You can find him at Nichols Live at AOL.com. That's uh, his PayPal if you want to support his work he's doing. I want to take a few final calls. Uh, who have I not gone to yet? Who's up next? Daniel in Louisiana? Daniel, you're on the air. Go ahead. 
All right, Daniel, you want to go on air? All right, he's gone. O'Brien uh, in Maryland, you're on the air. Go ahead, O'Brien. Yes, hi. Uh, basically, recently, technically, technically, Yeah, I'm getting an audio to... problem. Speak right into your telephone for me. Well, basically, China can go straight to hell because basically we're not stopping this whole liberty movement. I mean, for them to tell them, tell Facebook and Twitter that basically they need to shut down this stuff that we can't have anything, it's completely, you know, crazy. No, I agree with you, and I hear you. I'm going to jump because your audio is breaking up. Think about it, folks. It was in the Wall Street Journal, Associated Press. I read it 45 minutes ago saying, shut Alex Jones down, shut down the media, you know, shut down Drudge Report. Oh, my. I mean, how ridiculous now. They have Democratic Party operatives on CNN, Fox News, everywhere. I can't even watch all the clips or so many. I watched like five of them this morning. I was like, what the hell? Saying, shut me down. All I'm doing is promoting freedom. Lower taxes. They're that panicked. Take a call from Virginia and Georgia. Let's go to Chris in Georgia. Go ahead, Chris. Yes, hey, Alice, how are you? Good, brother. Yeah, I have two questions for you. Um, in regards to Trump's VP Pence, do you think he is part of any secret society sort of um, the New World Order? And um, and about the EU, do you consider the countries of the EU to be the official countries or the EU just to be one country? Well, the EU's taking them over. The countries are all trying to get out of it. Nationalism, self-determination is happening. Uh, Pence is part of no secret society. He's a Christian. He's part of the Marine Corps. That's a public society. Uh, but I guess killing people in an organization is a secret society. I, I, I'd watch Pence. My gut tells me he's good. Trump did the right thing. He's, nobody's perfect. But this is a real attempt to actually rebuild America. The globalists want to collapse it. Our elite weren't perfect, but some of the elite did want to kill the country. So what you're seeing is people going, wait, you're not going to kill America. Stop it. Uh, the globalists lied about globalism. They said it was for another reason. A lot of good people bought into it. My dad it was a junior in high school, already at UT. He was top of his class, and he was you know, brought in and told about world government and everything else. And it was all the top students were brought in. This is a big secret program. We're exposing it together now, and we're fighting it together now. So that's what's happening. Go ahead. I mean, I agree with you 100%. You mean, I was just thinking that he could be a part of any... Um, Absolutely. Society. Look, nobody's perfect. But here's the deal. Trump's not out to get us. The globalists are panicking. This is real. I'm out of time. Sorry to Scott and others. Incredible job, crew. Uh, 11 a.m. tomorrow, Central. Infowars.com forward slash show. They're doing everything they can to shut down this broadcast. Because they know we're real. We have the fire of liberty. George Washington's fire. We have it. <laughs> and they can't stand it. And nothing on earth, when you take action, can stop it. Except the good Lord above and God's with us, so who can be against us? Great job with the crew. See you tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, Infowars.com.